Today we will introduce you to an emergency cooking and heating source that you can get for under 30 bucks. Hey Provident Preppers, I'm Kylie. And I'm Jonathan and today we are talking about this product, Safe Heat. And it is a great emergency heating and cooking option for you. We don't have a relationship with these people, but we've used them for years, so let's see what they can do. Okay, so before we get much further into this, um, I want to make sure you know where to buy this. So we will leave a link to Safe Heat in the description of this video, but I'm going to tell you it's going to cost a fortune. It's like $70 for a flat. Now a flat, um, we bought these at Sam's Club. I just went yesterday, um, and it's in the catering section of Sam's Club, and this, for this flat, is less than $20 at Sam's Club. And each one of these cans, they're six hour cans, which means that this flat will produce 72 hours of burn time. And that's really important because when you look at this and see how easily this could be stored in your pantry or someplace in your house, it's all packaged up really nicely. Um, and you can use it all the time, right? If you like chocolate fondue, this, this is definitely for you. But as far as an emergency fuel source, if you don't have much money and you don't have a good place to store fuel, this just might be the answer for you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about two different ways that we like to use it. One is to make a little terracotta pot heater, and the other one is actually for cooking. So let's get started with the terracotta pot heater. So before we get started, I am the safety guy, I have been, will be part of what I do. Um, when we're doing anything like this, now I totally trust this stuff. We've had no issues whatsoever, but as a matter of practice, and I hope that you will do it too, we just have this carbon monoxide alarm wherever we are burning anything because it will alert us if there's a problem. So just make sure that we're doing this safely. And the one thing about this carbon monoxide detector is it has a digital readout. We'll right. leave a link to it, but any good carbon monoxide detector that has a digital readout, the reason why that's important is because normally a carbon monoxide detector has to reach a certain threshold before it alarms. This will let us know if we have any issues at all so we can immediately um, proactively take care of that and ventilate. So we always have that together with us. Now, there's a few things that you're gonna need. Um, the safe heat, we talked about what that is and where to get it. Sterno is not the same thing as safe heat. So um, Sterno does make some safe heat, right? Um, but not all of them can be burned indoors safely. So make sure that you understand that. This is a folding stove. It's just a folding camp stove. Um, you can pick them up pretty much anywhere. I'll leave a link online. It's more expensive if you get it on Amazon. But um, I have a friend who just picks them up at Cabela's. So I know that they're available at Cabela's. And this little stove. So I just put it together just like that, which means that it's really easy to store away flat as part of your emergency preparedness. And then John's just going to light this, and while he does that, go ahead. Um, see how easy it fits in there? Now there's another brand, comes in a green package and it's black. It does not do um, as good of a job. It doesn't hold these cans of safe heat very well. So personally, I would, pay the extra couple bucks that it takes to get the sterno one and do that. Now I can feel, I can feel this heat. Oh, definitely. Yeah, all the way up here. So you want to be really careful. This is a small terracotta pot. Now I'm just going to put this on the top and then I want to block the hole with something that is non-flammable. This is just a piece of aluminum foil. And then I put the other pot on top. Now, I want to make sure that if this gets bumped, it's not going to fall over, right? And that is my problem with some of the other designs. Whatever you do, whatever kind of stove you're using, make sure that it is stable because this is going to get really, really hot. And I am going to be able to like warm my hands here, but it will be too hot to touch. So I've got my little digital thermometer here because Jonathan has to measure everything. I do. It's part of who I am. And so. we're just going to put it inside here and let it heat up for a few minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Now this 
is really cool because it's that's actually pretty warm. Like like you can't you can't keep your hands on it. No way. Um, but it's it's kind of a nice localized heat source because we've taken advantage of the mass in the heaters in order to um, kind of localize some of that that heat. Um, I think it's fairly safe. Yeah, it is. Oh. As you can see, we're up at 480 degrees. Uh, so very, very warm and there's no carbon monoxide. So uh, really a cool system here. Yeah, not ideal, right? Yeah. I would any day have a wood burning stove over this because it would be much more able to warm up my whole space. But man, could this keep you from freezing? So always make sure there's plenty of ventilation though, right? You don't have to open your windows, but monitor this um, and make sure that you do have enough oxygen. So I wouldn't put it inside of a tent. I think there might not be enough oxygen in there, but. Well, and generally that wouldn't be a stable either for yeah. tipping this thing over. So yeah. this is a great location for it right here. Okay, so now let's see how it cooks. As you can see, this is a can that we have already opened and used, you can see the blackening here, but the really nice thing about this is when you're done with it, you put the lid on. Well, sort of. Sort of. So you put the lid on like that. Just but, to smother the flame. But if you tighten it right away, the suction occurs and like no, nothing except for Johnny's big buff muscles will ever get it off again. Anyway, back to the story <laughs> here. Um, yes, yeah, so you can just uh, smother the flame and then put the cap on. And then you use it again next time. So really great. Okay, with the same setup, we can actually use it for emergency cooking. And today, um, this is one of Valley Food Storage's um, freeze-dried meals. And I really like them because they don't have a lot of um, preservatives and things like that that I can't eat in them. So it's a really good choice. But we're, so we're just gonna put this pot right on there. This is just one of my regular kitchen pots. You can tell I've done this before. It'll black in the center just a little bit, but that's okay. And we're going to put the water in there. I am going you to. You are going to put the water in there. Why would you like, lady? No, 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 sweetheart. You dump all of the water in there. I ha I pre-measured this out on the video so that we nice. wouldn't waste any time during this moment. <laughs> I, I need to be a better communicator. It's true. Okay. And so then this is, oh, the, John got to pick which kind he wanted. The white bean and lime chili. This is an oxygen absorber that's packed in it. You do not eat it and you do not reuse them. But can you see this in here? It's all freeze dried. And so now you can do this and I need two right. of those in it. Actually, wait, we should heat the water first. We'll be right back. Okay. Okay, it's time to add this. Right. Now, one of the things that you need to understand about canned heat when you're cooking in it with it, or safe heat, is that it never, I'll stir it, you can dump it. It never really comes to a rolling boil. It's more of a, um, like a simmer, lots of bubble boil, and it will take longer to cook everything than you think it's going to. Um, it's just the way that it is. Um, so you have to understand your fuel, right? If you were cooking with propane or butane, man, you're going to have a super hot fire fast and you're going to get everything cooking really well. So this can cook indoors nicely, but it's going to take longer. So if normally you're going to take 10 minutes, you're going to want to plan for 30. Okay, so it's been about a half an hour, which is longer than it would have normally taken to finish this soup. But the problem is, is we're using safe heat, right? And that is just how this fuel works. So now... Taste time. Johnny gets to I try. always like the oh, taste part. Because I'm on camera. So with the safe heat, we can use other dishes too. You don't have to just use this. What was that I heard? It's pretty good. It's hot though. It's very so hot. It's done its job. It's very hot. So maybe I'll show you a couple of the other things that we use. Um, and then we'll let Johnny eat while I, while I show you some of those other things. We'll be right back. One thing that we should mention about the safe heat is 
it is a fairly direct source of heat, so it's going to go just right in that center of this pot. You could see where that black spot was. Um, so you do need to stir it a little more often. This pan does a pretty good job of dissipating that heat out, but still, if I leave it for a couple of minutes, it will stick in the middle here. So just be aware. Yeah, depending on what you're cooking, right? If, if it's water, we don't have to worry about it. But if it's something really thick, you, you would. And you could like even scrub legs and stuff using that because I've sure. done that before. Okay, now let's move on to a couple of different ideas about how I use this. This is actually just a fondue pan or a chafing dish that I had picked up at a local um, discount store. And so if I were to put this underneath here, the flame, the can is gonna be down too far. I need to stick something under it. Here, thank you. Thank you, I'm glad I could be using Yes, like this to lift it up because the original dish that has the alcohol in it doesn't fit right. So sometimes I have to adapt it. Now, um, if I were just making chocolate fondue and I wanted, you know, a double burly kind of effect, um, I would leave this, fill this with water and put this pan on. But if you're actually cooking with this, this doesn't work. It just keeps it from getting hot enough. So um, I would put this here so that the heat source, the flame, is closer to the bottom of the pan. Now, um, Safe Heat recommends that you only use two of these at a time. So um, knowing that, sometimes I'm bad and I push the limit and I will actually use three of them because say I'm using this to make macaroni and cheese. I need a good rolling boil. If I don't have that, then the macaroni is going to get like all gross and soggy and, and that's not good, right? So you can adjust accordingly, but you just remember they say only two. So if you're going to do the right thing, you're only going to use two. And you're going to make sure that those are secure enough that somebody doesn't bump it and it Absolutely. And they out. should never, ever be touching. They need to be a little bit spaced apart, right? There's some real common sense things um, that are important. So that's what you can do with the chafing dish. Now, this is something called a Kelly kettle. And I absolutely love our kettle, yeah. Kelly kettle um, because a lot of times you can see from this, it's all black. We use this, it's like a little rocket stove and we, we use this to create a fire, which this is a water jacket. So you can put your water in here um, and you put this little stopper on and it'll heat this up really well. And that's really cool. But unfortunately, if I put the canned heat in here, it, and then I put this on top, there's not enough oxygen to keep that canned heat um, working. And so this piece of the Kelly kettle doesn't work. But what I like to do is this is really super stable. So there's these folding stoves, which I think are great, but um, I can use this base to cook also. So what I would do, this is just a little block of wood. I stole it from the kid's toy box. Um, and I keep that in there. I put the safe heat on top of it because I need it raised up a little bit taller. And then I will, can you put that pan on here? And then I'll put this on here and light it. And voila, I have a different way to use canned heat to cook. There's plenty of oxygen getting to the canned heat here. So I don't have that issue. So think about this. We just want to help you process it. You don't have to have a folding stove to make um, this work for cooking. This wouldn't work on this. This is, the folding stove is really good for the heater. Oh, it's so nice and warm. <laughs> um, but as far as cooking goes, there's so many things that you can do, but you need a space between the canned heat. If you get it too close, it's going to put out that flame. It's got to be far away, but too far away, it's not going to be quite hot enough. So, um, will you put that back? I just want to show one more thing. All of this that we've been doing, we've probably been 40, 45 minutes cooking. You see the digital readout of the carbon monoxide detector, it's still indicating zero. So that's really, that's good. That's what we want it to be. We don't want any carbon monoxide in our house because even low levels can hurt you. A couple quick safety tips. First, you'll notice that I have a white board under here. This is a cutting board that is non-flammable. And so by placing this on it, I'm protecting my kitchen counter. Cause you can tell this was here just a few minutes ago before we slid it over. And this counter is actually pretty warm. So always make sure that you're protecting your surfaces and not getting anything flammable near this because 
It's pretty warm. It's yeah. really pretty yeah. warm. And you have an open flame. So how do we take care of that open flame? Well, we're going to, now since we're done, I like to use tongs to put the cap on. The cap just smothers it, um, takes care of that. So I like to just use the tongs to set that on there. Okay, and most of the time when we're burning this, this we would keep this closed, right? Because we don't, whoops, we don't want that flame to be as exposed. But you can't see the pretty can if we do that. So that's why we, we left it open. So always be safe. This is hot. Don't, don't let it be knocked over or put it any place near anything flammable. Got it? And when you put that lid on, don't tighten it until it's completely cooled or else you won't be able to get it off again. And now for the question of the day. How are you going to cook and heat if there's no electricity or natural gas? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution. <laughs>